personal finance practice problem using OneNote. Yield to maturity and effective annual yield. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along, we're in the icon on the left-hand side, practice problem tab in the 11130 yield to maturity and effective annual yield tab. Also take a look at the immersive reader tool, practice problems, typically in the text area too, with the same name, same number, but with transcripts, transcripts that can be translated into multiple languages, either listened to or read in them. Information on the left hand side, we have the bond, the face value at the 1000, the coupon rate, which in a prior presentation we practiced to calculate at the 10%. We have semi annual payments, that means that we're going to get the interest payments, the annuity portion of the bond on a semi annual six month period, half year period, as opposed to annual. We've got the coupon payments, then are going to be $50. That calculation we can do real quickly. Let's say we have the 1000 face amount. The coupon rate is 10%, so times 0.1, that would give us 100. We're gonna divide that by two because we're talking about the semi-annual. So note that this coupon rate is as often presented even in a semi-annual bond on an annual basis, an annual rate that we then need to divide by two to think about what the semi-annual payments will be. And that's part of the confusion that we're gonna be looking into here, noting that oftentimes when we're doing comparisons of rates, we like to have them on an annual type of basis as basically a typical standard. But it gets a little bit confusing when we've got these semi-annual or other time period payments such as we have here with the semi-annual bonds. We've got the years to maturity at one. Also just realize that if you have this $50 coupon, you can then calculate the coupon rate by taking the $50 times two to get to $100 per year divided by the 1000 and that would give us our 10% the coupon rate. Now we're gonna say the price of the bond is at the 1009 uh, 36 that is over or a uh, higher than the face value that means that the bond is at a premium at this point in time so we're going to dive a little bit further into these different kind of rate issues here so the first one we might calculate is the yield to maturity note that the yield to maturity is kind of like the market rate uh it is often we want to represent it or present it on an annual basis a yearly type of basis but when we calculate the rate because the payments are happening from the an annuity calculation present value standpoint every six months then usually we're going to calculate the rate on a six month time period so we could take that that six month time period and multiply it times two to get the yield to maturity so this is something we got to kind of keep straight in our mind because when we try to figure the bond actually the correct rate to use would be the uh, 4.5 that matches the periods of the bond, which would be every six months. But when we present it and compare it to other kind of investments, for example, we often present it in a yearly amount, the yield to maturity. But this number is not quite precise in some ways because we really have to present these two numbers saying, well, the yield to maturity is 9%, but it's a semi-annual uh, payment bond at the 4.5%. So then we have this third calculation, the effective annual yield, which can be used for comparison purposes. So let's see if we can get this kind of straight. Let's do the calculation here. Remember that the coupon rate is the rate that's actually on the bond. Now we're gonna calculate the yield to maturity, but we're gonna figure first the yield to maturity based on the, the current periods in place, which in this case is semi-annual. So we'll call it yield to maturity divided by two, YTM divided by two. You can do that with a rate function. We do this in Excel, so you, I'm just gonna go over it in theory here. If you wanna work it in Excel, highly recommend doing so. But the rate function, we would say rate, number of periods would be just one period out, but we're gonna multiply it times two because we're talking semi-annual periods, six month periods, therefore there will be two of them. Comma, the payment, the payment that we're gonna have would be the $50 which would be the 1,000 times 10% divided by two. And so that's gonna be the $50 and then comma, the present value is going to be a negative number in our calculation here, note, but that's gonna be the amount that we're going to be paying. If we bought the bond, 1,936, and then comma, the future value, the amount that we're gonna get at the end 
would be the $1,000. So that would give us the 4.5 rate that we could use, which is great, works great, but that's on a semi-annual basis now. So to get the yield to maturity on an annual basis, we can multiply it times two and possibly then use this kind of annual basis to compare to other, to other investments. But again, it's kind of tricky because it's like, well, it's really 9% but it's it's a semi-annual bond paying at the 4.5, which is a little bit different than an annual bond, you know, at the 9%. So if you wanted to get the effective annual yield, which is an attempt to get a number that better approximates the, the comparison to other kinds of investments, you can use this function in Excel, affect um, uh, brackets, the nominal rate, and then the number of periods, which is gonna be one times two. So we'll pick up the rate times, times the, and then the number of periods in the function. In other words, the first number E2 representing the nine, and then the number of periods is gonna be one times two. And that should give us a number that's a little bit closer to comparisons uh, when I'm comparing, but we don't really use it to calculate the bond. So let's see if we can kind of understand that a little bit further. We can also get to this number by using a formula, which is here. So it's one plus the yield to maturity divided by two squared minus one. So you can do that like in Excel, it would be one plus the uh, yield to maturity, which is this divided by two, which would give us to that 4.5 squared minus one. We can calculate it that way. And we already have, when we calculated up top, this 4.5 is the yield to maturity divided by two. That's kind of what we calculated first. So we can simplify it even further, just saying one plus that 4.5, the six month uh, rate squared minus two, and we get the same result. Okay, so then if you were to, if we, if you were to then think about, okay, let me figure the actual bond price and see if this makes sense. This rate right here, is kind of like the market rate, but it's a market rate aligned to the period, the six month time period. So if I use that to calculate our bond price, which we've seen in prior presentations, it would look something like this. We would take the present value of the interest payments, which would be the present value of the rate, which is that six month rate, the 4.5 comma number of periods, which would be the one times two comma the payment. Uh, the payment would be the $50 here that's the 94. Then we've got the present value of the face amount, the 1000 we would receive at the end, present value of the rate, we're using the six month rate, 4.5%, comma, number of periods, two, one times two, comma, comma, future value, the 1000, adding that up, that gets us to the 100936 as we would expect given, so we just went back and forth with this, with this 4.5 and kind of proved getting back to basically the bond price. Now, if you did this with the yield to maturity, you might think, well, wait a sec, shouldn't I be able to take then, then uh, this rate, just multiply it times two and act like we got everything at, at, at the end of the year, right? Use it, use it as one year. So if we tried that, we could say, okay, the present value of the interest payments would be the rate then, which this time we're taking the 9%, the yield to maturity, and then comma, the number of periods would just be one period because we're taking an annual yield instead of six month period, comma, the payment would be not 50, but 50 times two or 100 because we would have 100 uh, for the two six month payments we would be getting. And that'd be 92, slightly different than the 94. And then the face value, if we took the rate of the 9%, comma number of periods which would be just one year and then we took comma comma the future value of the 1000 that would be the 917 slightly different than the 916 adding those up we get something slightly different than we have up top it's a small difference but if you're talking about bigger dollar amounts it becomes more and more uh, significant so one more calculation on this annual yield. I'm just gonna put this annual yield into like a format in a table. I think it's useful to be able to do this in Excel because it helps you to kind of build your Excel tables, possibly being able to standardize things and make kind of calculations or budgets that you can then work on the left instead of like changing your data on the left uh, instead of reworking an algebraic problem basically by hand 
uh, all the time, which can be a little bit slow if you're trying to run different scenarios. So if I put this into like a table format, I'd say one, I'm putting that on the on the right side here. Then I'm gonna take the yield to maturity divided by two. I'm gonna do an inner calculation to do that. That's gonna be the 9%, uh, percent, which we got up top, divided by two, which is going to then give us, now I'm putting this on the outside, 4.5, 9% divided by two. That's gonna be the 4.5. So now we've got the one plus that. So one plus the yield to maturity divided by two is the 4.104.5% about. We square that, that gives us the 109.20. Then we subtract out the one and that gives us the effective annual yield. I think if you can build like little tables like this, it helps you to kind of transparently see things and basically adjust the data on the left-hand side and see what is happening as the math is being you know, calculated out in a table format. All right, let's try to understand this difference a little bit more and say like, why would that be? Let's imagine we've got, we've got one year, which is broken out into two time periods. And we're just gonna imagine that we've got a thousand dollars here that we're going to be receiving a return on and we're gonna receive the return at the, at the 4.5. So let's say that we've got the thousand dollars and we're getting, we're getting this rate every six months, the six month rate. So a thousand times the 0.045. So every six months we're getting 45, 45 return. So 45 in one six month time period, second six month time period at the end of the year, we've got 90 that we received. If we try to take the 90 divided by the thousand, that would give us our annual kind of return 0.099%. Uh, 9, 9%. So, but however, note that from an annual basis, uh, you, when we do this, we're basically kind of assuming that these two payments happened at the end of the year. It would be kind of like we've got the $90 at December 31st at the end of the year, which isn't really the case because we got this 45 in the middle of the year. And that's typically more beneficial than us getting the full 90 at the end of the year, because theoretically we can take that $45, for example, and if you reinvested it and got it, got a return for six months, 45, times the times the what, what did we say it was times the rate 0 0.045 times 0 0.045 we get another two do, two dollars or so right so really i mean if you take that into consideration you you might get a return if you were able to reinvest of the 90 plus the 2.06 if you were able to reinvest this amount for you know the six months which would be 9203 on our yearly you know return and if i took that and divided it by the 1000 we get something like the 9.2029 so that's you know kind of kind of the thought process when you look at this when you look at this stream of payments that are that are on an on an annual basis getting 90 dollars at the end of the year is not as good as getting 45 dollars and 45 dollars every six months because you're getting this $45 sooner and in theory you can invest it and get an added return on it. Now the bonds get a little bit a little bit more confusing when you when you try to break this all down because you've really got two streams of income happening or cash flows. One is going to be that face amount that you get at the end of of the period which you can think about in this case either being at the end of one year or th at the end of two periods, right? And then you also have the annuity kind of component, which is the stream of payments, which is the $50 every six months that you're that you're going to be getting. But you get a, you get an idea that when you try to when you try to just take the 4.5 rate that you would actually be using to calculate the bond price and just double it to get the yield to maturity, that could be useful for the for the calculations. It's easy to kind of do. But when you try to then say that 9%, if I'm comparing that to other investments, possibly other bonds that are yearly bonds or other similar investments that are getting other returns, then you can't quite use just like that one number. You'd have to think, well, it's 9% return, which is, com which is paying out semi-annual at the 4.5, or you can try to approximate it to be using this calculation, the 9.2029. Uh, 
which is hopefully a more comparable number. So if we break down all these kind of percentages, we've got the coupon rate, which is actually on the bond, which is often presented on a yearly basis. Therefore, if it's a semi-annual bond, you gotta divide it by two oftentimes to get to the coupon payment on a semi-annual basis. When you calculate the actual rate on the bond using like a rate function in Excel, you're usually first calculating it on the periods that are used, which in this case is semi-annual, half year, six month time periods. You can then double that to get to the yield to maturity, the 9%, the 9% also being something that you would have to kind of use when you calculate the, the bond price because you would take the 9% in essence yield to maturity divided by two, which would be the 4.5, but it's not the one that you can compare as readily to other investments because you'd have to basically and that's where the effective annual yield would come in. The effective annual yield not typically being something that you're gonna use to calculate the bond price, but hopefully it's a better approximation when you're making comparisons between different bonds as you're taking the semi-annual, for example, here, and uh, making it into like an annual comparable number so that you can compare yields to other investments on an annual basis.